My guest today is Alison Sigaro, who I've had the opportunity to interview a couple of times uh, in, in the past few months. And she's dedicated to Santa for Seniors uh, and trying to raise money to help seniors get through what is considered by many people a very challenging time uh, being the Christmas season. And when you think about the Christmas season is the most joyous time of the year. These people shouldn't be struggling and looking for our third parties to help them out. But that's exactly what we're going to do today. And we need you to help us. And we're hoping that you'll be moved to do that as well. So tell me a little about Santa for Seniors, how long you've been doing it, what you're trying to raise the money for, and how much you might raise if we're successful on this program. Thank you, Peter. Um, so Santa for Seniors has been um, a response that started in, in the US Minister with Senior Services Society to support older adults um, in 2008. Um, those who might have uh, just lost a loved one or a spouse or were isolated and would not have anybody to uh, reach out to them um, at this joyous time of year. And um, just to reach out to them and say that somebody cared, somebody was thinking of them. Um, the community support and business support has been amazing. Unfortunately, needs have been growing too over the last 13 years. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we are reaching out um, in a broader way this year, virtually and online, to be able to support those seniors who are um, just alone, isolated, or could use a little bit of a boost at this time of year. Um, what do we hope to raise? I think if we were really successful, our hope is to raise uh, 100,000 at the end of uh, the season, at the end of December. Um, and um, this would provide everything from a hot meal to a client or a frozen meal to somebody who could use that extra support, um, some personal hygiene or some warm things at this time of year. So it's um, just to help them through this time and um, put a smile on their face. You, you mentioned something uh, in, your, in your opening about loneliness. Why, uh, it's obvious, but why is loneliness so prevalent at this time of the year? And what can you do and what can your program do to help that aspect as well as the financial aspect? Uh, I think just the darker days, the weather, the inclement weather, Okay. Um, forces older adults to stay home and be housebound. Um, something about the sun that puts a smile on people's face, even in their worst times. Um, and, and, and the weather doesn't really help. So um, if somebody's shut in, um, I think we've all experienced that through COVID. It can be a bit depressing um, and the weather doesn't really help. So I think that's particularly true uh, for older adults um, who really look forward to that visit or that call or that um, person, that personal interaction. And with everything moving more and more in the last two years to virtual platforms and online, I think that's creating more of a need for social connection. So how many people could benefit from this program right here in British Columbia in, in the Lower Mainland? Uh, in the Lower Mainland, um, well, as, as many as we could support, um, we have a wait list right now of about 200 of people, people who know of our program from past years and reach out. Uh, traditionally, we've limited it to clients that we work with or people that we can actually reach out to with volunteers. Um, and quite often the numbers always exceed what we can do. So uh, our hope is to be able to do that. And if there's any surplus that we get, then we can ha happily uh, repeat this, uh, hopefully, uh, during the year a, a couple of times. So our hope is to be able to uh, reach out to as many people as possible for Christmas. And then whatever we um, are able to get that's in excess of that, or if there are more people um, to be able to share that um, good fortune during the rest of the year. So let's just, just play a little game here. Let's assume I came in off the street to see you. 
and I wanted to help you financially. How would you answer that question? What do you need this money for? How much do you need? And how can I be of assistance? Um, so the money that we are raising or trying to raise um, through Santa Fe Seniors is for meals for older adults who could use an extra meal at Christmas time particularly, um, for personal hygiene products that quite often they're challenged with just to make them feel better about themselves, a few warm things like toques, gloves, and hats to help them through the cold weather, um, and a starter kit. We often, um, this is also one of the highest times for people to be homeless. So it gives them the opportunity to have a little starter kit that may include things like uh, coffee, tea, jam, a little bit of protein that would be a welcome basket in their temporary housing that they get from us. So a welcome basket. And then if there's a, the, the last bucket is the largest, which is for the small appliances that go into their temporary housing. And that is a little bit more expensive, but that would be the biggest um, gift. So on the monies that you uh, re receive from your donors, uh, then you, you decide that these people need toasters or they need something over here. And then you go and acquire that and make sure that, that they get that need, they get that need filled. In COVID, yes, that's what we do. Uh, in the past, we would actually ask the older adults to give us a list of what they wanted individually. We'd have their name on a tag that would hang on a tree in community. And somebody would purchase, uh, pick up the tag and purchase the items and return it to the store. But with everything being a low touch environment, we are actually putting out the names and going and purchasing the stuff and delivering it ourselves just to prevent that um, touch point. Now, forgive me for asking this question. Is this just a BC program or is it a lower mainland program or is it anyone in need? Uh, this has traditionally been a new West program when it started. And now we have offices and operations with partners in Vancouver as well as uh, throughout the Lower Mainland. So this would be for any client of ours throughout the Lower Mainland. We serve clients in person throughout the Lower Mainland. Are there other organizations that do this or is it kind of exclusive to you? Uh, we do it exclusively for older adults. Other organizations do it for different uh, clients. So for uh, families or for um, other groups of um, people in need. So there are definitely uh, other organizations that do of um, vulnerable populations at this time. And what, what is the age distinction here? For us, um, the clients we serve are traditionally 60 and older. So 60 to 90, our oldest client right now is 95. So 60 to 90 is typically um, the age for our clients. Without being critical, how would a 60 year old be in this situation? Um, what? Normally it is uh, the loss of a spouse quite often. That's one of the biggest ones where um, an older adult has um, worked all their life, lived with a partner, believe they have the right amount of pension income to support them. And the spouse dies, they've suddenly got a reduction in their income. And that is substantial. That has impacted how they live or where they live. Um, and reciprocally, the cost of rental, most of them are in rental units, the cost of rental has gone up um, astronomically in the past few years, which causes that gap. Um, their pension income has not kept up with the cost of living. Um, for people, even older adults in strata ownership, where there are assessments that are above their pension limits, they now have a bit of a, a gap on what they can pay. At some point, they may run into a foreclosure. So there are people who normally lived independent lives, had no in no, um, never imagined themselves in this position, are quite often embarrassed to reach out and ask for help because they had hoped to be independent and find themselves in this position. Um, more, more often now we're seeing um, people who are um, particularly older women who are being abused either by their spouse or family member and uh, more often um, an adult child. Um, so where an owner, uh, an older adult might even own their own home or invested in it with their kids and are now being forced to sell because their adult child needs um, to buy a place or needs the money for something else. So it's those kind of situations that we're seeing more of. How long have you been doing this? 
I've been with senior services just over two years now. I'm not, sure, worked... I, I'm not sure I heard that correctly when I first asked you that, because okay. I thought you said maybe 20 years, but you've been dedicated to this for two years. Uh, yes, I've been dedicated to senior services for two years, but I've worked with older adults in DC for over 20 years in my work with other agencies. And what has impacted you the most? What, what one single gift, what one single comment has come to you that keeps you motivated and excited to do this? To see what is possible. Every single day we see opportunities where we, we can go to the root of the challenge and um, minimize it or, or prevent it from reoccurring or move it towards that end. Um, so things are possible. We've got tremendous um, partners and uh, I, I think even government is very supportive now. So seeing all of that, people starting to work together is what gives me hope that we can address this and um, it, it is something that we can hopefully um, resolve on a more permanent basis from a system basis. What, what one single need, is, is there one need than, than any others? that you're asked for? Um, from your viewers today or from? Just in the last couple of years. What, 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 what keeps recurring? Surprises you. Um, is, is it also diversified? You just tr try and accommodate as many people as you can. Yeah, each, each need is quite, un um, quite unique. There are some trends. There are some basic trends. Um, one simple one, and I'm hoping that that'll be addressed soon, is people who live in a property in DC, for example, as they get older and if they were on any kind of government assistance, they are automatically on their 60th, 65th birthday dropped because the system kicks in and they're dropped. But we don't have a connection with the federal system, the CRA and Service Canada. So they're not auto automatically picked up there. So quite often it's that gap and then they become homeless for six months till they can reapply and get all those papers into government to be able to make the connection. They legitimately will get that funding six months later, but in the meantime, we've created a problem. So if there was a magic wand and we could raise a, uh, one thing, that would be to have uh, a technological solution for people who are aging to be transitioned from province to federal seamlessly. That would eliminate at least 30% of our older adults falling off the system. How, how does somebody, uh, and I, I'm not asking this to, to be critical, how does someone who's in their 60s get into this situation? Just the, the, the cost of living today, for a lot of um, older adults just outstrips the, their income. Um, they have what was a reasonable income when they retire and um, the cost of living is just uh, helping that realistically. Is there hope at the end of the tunnel beyond your program? That these I, I, people, I believe so. That I these believe, people can I, access? I, I believe so. I, I think, um, I believe so. And how do people find you and come to you with a request? Um, they can just reach out to us uh, or, um, by phone. If they have um, an internet or email, they can connect to us online through our website. We have an, um, a page on our, our portal that they could reach out to us directly or definitely by phone. Um, our phone number is uh, 520-6621. They can reach out to us and uh, we've been very good at having somebody pick up the phone and respond to every call, either the same day or the next day, so they can always reach out to us. What happened in your life that changed your life that caused you to be the leader of this program? Uh, that you can talk about? Well, it was, it was quite accidental. I was uh, a leader of another agency. I was in transition. And a mentor of mine reached out to me and said, there's a small agency that has helped for two months. 
um, I think you'd be a great fit. Could you help them out? My predecessor was uh, taking some time off. Um, when I came to senior services for two months, I saw the need, I saw the opportunity, I believed I could add value. And uh, a month later, when the, my predecessor decided not to come back, I said to the board, I am here to stay. Um, I, I know I can do the, I can add value. I truly believe that. So it was an accident. It was meant to be two months. And uh, here I am. So what one thing has impressed you the most? What one gift, what one turnaround in somebody's life that has benefited from your program uh, that has touched you the most? I would say, oh my gosh, every, every week. Um, we have, um, we had a letter just last week from a social service worker who had been working with an older woman who didn't speak English as a first language. And she said, her, her letter was um, um, so touching where she said, I, I had no light, she had no light in her eyes and I had no way to turn. She said, everywhere I went, I couldn't get help. And then once I reached out to senior services and they supported her and they found ways to communicate even though language was a barrier and put her into temporary housing and she's now in permanent housing, which is part of the process, and she's set up. She says, I see the light in her eyes. I can't tell you what that means to me and what that means to her. So that's just one. And we hear that all the time, that when they, when they have no hope and they have that opportunity to be, um, um, just have the, that support, they're not looking for more. They just need temporary support to move on. I think that's what... Um, motivates me and keeps me here. Would you say that's the biggest need, that the individual has no hope? Truly, truly. Uh, it's simple things, right? Ageism is such a challenge. Uh, we know a lot of people that we work with are homeless and older adults. We go to a rental appointment for a unit and there are six people there for the same unit. 90% of the time, the older person doesn't get it um, because they're you're perceived to be more difficult to have as a tenant. So it's just perceptions. It's uh, those kind of things that um, create barriers for them. What's the most effective way for you to get this message out to other British Columbians? I'm, I, I, I'm excited about this podcast. This would be a huge opportunity to your followers and people that um, you know are in, in business because everybody has an older adult in their life, even in the circles that I work with or interact with, and understand that uh, we all hope to be there one day and it could be us. So final question, what, um, what support could members of this audience do to help you right now when we finish this conversation? Help us get to our goal of 100,000. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. That would support the older adults that we work with, not just now, but for this coming year. That would be amazing. Because there's, be there's obviously a great need. And I think this is a program that a lot of people are not really aware of uh, and should be aware of. So thank you for allowing us to interview you. And uh, uh, Sherry will make the financial arrangements and get it to you. Thanks. Maybe not tomorrow, certainly Monday, Tuesday. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you.